Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to reacting to President Gay Rights of No Importance in Kenya. Um, sounds like an interesting topic, quite controversial, but uh, we're yet to see what's in this video a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing and everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed we're very very grateful hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed so without wasting time let's get into the video one path network I mean, you guys would have known who they are already. They do a fantastic job in terms of disseminating some of the most high-quality Dawa videos on the internet in the English language. They have now actually produced an app. Now, I know in this Ramadan, you're going to want to take advantage of that. I've already taken advantage of that and browsed through the app, and it's an amazing app. I'm sure you're going to be downloading it right now. The link is in the description. I think one of the most interesting things to look at in terms of when you talk about LGBTQ rights and America as a superpower and also Africa as a continent is the approach of some of the African presidents to questions about homosexual rights. So I'm just going to look at one video today. There's many of them online of different uh, African presidents kind of answering this in different ways. One we're going to look at today and then come back and react to it. One of the major issues, and it's a holdover from sort of colonial Victorian, is the issue of sexual preference in many African countries. In Kenya, to be gay, the LGBT community is, is illegal. They just want to have equal rights, the same privacy and equality as all other Kenyans do. Is that something that you aspire to for your country? I want to be very clear, uh, uh, Christian. Uh, there is... I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it's, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights or this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. This is not about Uhuru Kenyatta saying yes or no. This is an issue that the people of Kenya themselves, who have bestowed upon themselves a constitution, right, after several years, have clearly stated that this is not a subject that they are willing to engage in. I, I, I it's a very you're going to get yourself into trouble. Mm. I mean, for her to say you're going to get yourself into trouble, to an elected official, not just an elected official, but the president of Kenya, the president of Kenya, I think shows absolute audacity. In fact, I was quite surprised when I looked at the comments in this particular video, the one with the most uh, likes, 16,000 comments, is one who is somebody who's highlighting this point. Who are you to tell, he says in the comment, a democratically elected leader of a, a sovereign nation that he will get in trouble for representing the values of his people. And then he says, correctly, I think, the West needs to stop forcing minority opinions down the throats of nations that are fundamentally opposed to those ideals. Let's continue listening to what he says. But it's a global issue it's, right now. It's, it's important to them where they are. Why is it I am important saying to you that it as is president not of the country? important to me as the leader of 49 million Kenyans and after, if you want to ask me my personal opinion. What is your personal after opinion? After I finish my process, I can talk about my personal opinion. Position. Would you publicly say that people who are LGBT, gay members of the Kenyan population should not be discriminated against? No Kenyan should be abused, should be, you know, uh, uh, um, mistreated in any particular, every Kenyan is protected by law. You see here, what we're seeing is a clash of, uh, we're seeing a clash of values, really. But not just a clash of values, or in the sense that you've got these kind of American uh, knowledge productions being forced down 
the Kenyan presidents, and not just him, but the society in which he represents, because correctly he says about 90%, 99%, some say 9 out of 10, people in his country see homosexuality as uh, inexcusable, as an act. But we're seeing actual problems within the framework of the Westerner, because the Western framework says, okay, you're allowed to have a sovereign nation, and this is one of the um, kind of human rights that you can have, but at this, and you can have a democra democratic vote, but at the same time, you've got these minority rights which you should respect. So what should be prioritized here? Should it be that you have democratic agency of a, for of a sovereign nation that is prioritized, or the minority rights of a group of people who's, who have decided to identify through their sexuality? So even within the framework of Western imperial, uh, or um, ideology, there is a clash within that framework, not just in contradistinction or juxtaposition with the African nations. So let's continue and kind of finalize with some thoughts. Every single Kenya, but they also must recognize that their freedoms are also must be taken into the entire context of the society. And he is right, that it is a question of society, and not only that, but uh, on contractarian understandings of liberalism, okay, where you, as, as a subject, individual subject, you are contracted to the, the, the foreign nation, or to the nation in question, through citizenship or whatever it may be, you are obliged to obey by laws. You are obliged to obey by laws. So now you have a, another layer of problem, not, not once again a problem between ideologies, but within the ideology of liberalism. Because here we have, okay, sovereign nation, you have the democratic uh, initiative, and now you also have a third layer, which is a social contract. All three are pointing in the direction of, okay, homosexual, uh, homosexuality can legitimately, from within theory, okay, be seen as something which can be outlawed. But then that, the only kind of um, thing against this is to say, well, actually, uh, homosexuals are minority right and th that should trump everything else now you can make arguments either way what i will say is un um, or inexcusable really is the fact that in the past the uncle tom the uncle tom barack obama when he went to uh kenya which is his actual you know kind of mother nation if you want to call it his, his actual nation where he's from he was speaking down to the Kenyan people, most of which you don't believe that homosexuality should be something which is practiced uh, publicly or actual penetrative homosexuality is done. He's speaking down and trying to lecture them using Western uh, imperial parlance. The point of the matter is this. He went further in tying foreign aid, foreign aid with uh, whether or not countries... Uh, implement LGBTQ policies. This means to say, now look, when you have African countries and poverty happening in African countries and children dying, toddlers dying, babies dying because they don't have the food to nourish themselves, what, what Obama and the liberal project in America have decided to do is say, that is less of a priority than homosexuals getting to experiment sexually in a public sphere. Can you imagine this? So the right of a homosexual to have intercourse or to show intimacy to his homosexual partner in a public sphere, because we're not talking about what happens behind closed doors, that is more important than the right of a child to eat and drink. And we are going to tie foreign aid with, your, uh, with a foreign um, prime minister or president's ability to implement LGBTQ policies. What have the kids got to do with these policies? What a cruel and unusual kind of punishment that you're inflicting upon children who are completely bystanders to these ideological discussions. It shows you the extent to which the Uncle Tom, Barack Obama and those who follow his footsteps are willing to go to strip people away from their rights, young children, uh, democratic citizens, whatever you, whoever it may be in African countries. And this should highlight to us the extent to which this agenda, this colonializing imperial agenda of the Americans is a corrosive force which needs to be tackled head on. Actually, in the literature, there is, there is a name for this. There's a name for prioritizing kind of one community right over another. Okay, and it's called homo-nationalism. Jasper Poir says 
Homonationalism is defined as a facet of modernity and a historical shift marked by the entrance of some homosexual bodies as worthy of protection by nation states. A constitutive and fundamental um, relationship between the state, capitalism and sexuality. The, the point here is, if you want, what is homonationalism? It's basically prioritizing one community, in this case the gays, right, gay community, whatever that may mean nowadays, to be honest, because that, that is ill-defined. So we don't know what that means no more. With, with the inclusion of all these other letters of the LGBTQ+, plus, over and above another community, in this case it's Africans, it's black people, it's children, you see, who, who can't get now the, 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 the foreign aid that they would have uh, used to feed themselves and to clothe themselves. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Another point that he was um, bringing up, I mean, it's really, really sad that out of all the population, you're going to single out one as more important and the, which is, and the number is small compared to the rest of the com uh, populations that are usually huge and just, mm, it's a crazy, crazy world. I mean, the Kenyan president answered that question well, but it's the guts of the um, the person that was interviewing him. You will never find such a person talking to a, an American president and saying such a thing or having such the courage to say such things. This is just showing us they don't, <laughs> I really feel like African presidents are not, um, are not respected. She was trying to push him in a corner where she wanted him. I guess he was smart enough to know that, no, this is just not it. He spoke about, uh, Huru Kenyatta spoke about, um, uh, what was it? Was it Valiant Culture? It was culture and something. I've forgotten what the other one was. Why are we saying we're independent, we're free from e anyone, but when we want to respect our culture, we're looked at as being behind or hindering people's rights? Because the constitution is saying marriage is between woman and man. Re religion is saying the same thing. So who are the Americans to say otherwise? Not just the Americans, the other people as well. Look at what happened recently, the hijab thing, that's their tradition, that's their culture, that's um, something that they take pride in. Who is the French government, whoever had made that decision to say no, they won't follow this, that's not right. People are supposed to uphold their culture as they please, it should be optional. Say, let it be optional. Don't make that decision f for people. That's not oppressing people. But when you're in a country where you even know your culture says this, we all have different cultures that say different things. It's really, really sad. And then he spoke about Obama. Way to go. That was a very, very interesting uh, point. He spoke about Obama and what Obama went and said when he was on that tour in Kenya. It's just, and then you say that's the president for the world. It says a lot because he's trying to make you think that you're doing something wrong when all these years you've been living this way. And you know this is not allowed in your country, in your culture, in your tribe, in your what, whatever it is. Why should we change to meet Western needs? Why can't the West mind their own business? Why can't Kenya whatever African country make their own decisions. They're not oppressing anyone. That's what they believe in. You Americans think you're free to do whatever you want. And let it be so. Do your thing, let them do their thing, but then stop. I really think, I, I really don't think African countries are that free. Even if we have a president today, I don't think the president makes all those decisions along their consequences. Look at what happened to Zimbabwe. Because Mugabe was against this western uh, dictatorship of things what happened sanctions up to now sanctions 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 for what or because he didn't want to do for his country what the western wanted 
it's very pathetic and I don't understand. I think Africa needs to believe and trust that you can actually do without the Western world. It's not the way the Western world doesn't depend on um, other countries for su for support economically and other stuff. Africa can do it all as well. You can produce your own goods. You can produce. You can feed the homeless, take care of your people, many different things, whatever aspect you want to look at. Africa can do it. But then. That's another topic for another day. Don't want this video to be long. Otherwise, let me know what you guys actually think about this. If you want to be gay, be gay. That's you. But then don't make other people think otherwise for having a different opinion. Yeah. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video. you